Hello and welcome to another featured interview. I'm here with Simon Ford, who is the Group COO of Flamingo International. Welcome, thank, thank you for coming to talk to us today. Uh, it's been a, well. It's been an amazing year for you guys. I think you'll, you'll all agree. I mean, there's been you know rough with the smooth as, as there is with any um, operator. But I'd just like you to give me some other sort of travel retail highlights for you guys in the last sort of twelve months. Okay, I think we started the year in January by opening the fashion boutique in St Martin in the mm -hmm. Caribbean. Mm -hmm. Uh, we also opened a Coffee Express and a, a, a cafe. Mm -hmm. um, we opened the Tangier Med Port in Morocco, which services 2 million passengers traveling between Europe and, and North Africa. And then I guess the real highlight was opening in Brazil just before the World Cup, the day before the World Cup started. And 10 days ago, we opened the first store in Paraguay in Asuncion. So we've had a number of openings, which uh, all of them have been in new parts of the world for us, mm -hmm. and we're, we're extremely pleased. Mm -hmm. So is there any sort of one that stands out for you, particularly, I guess you say the one in, in Brazil? I think Brazil because we got the contract in January. Mm -hmm. We had five months to develop the shop, get the federal licenses, get the buying, get the supply chain. Um, everyone was telling us it couldn't be done and we did it. So I guess that's the one we're proudest yeah, of. Absolutely. Um, I know that um, Paul has mentioned this before, Paul Topping, um, that there has there is a tendency uh, for over premiumisation. In fact, Eric mentioned it at the opening conference of the TFWA uh, tax free um, exhibition. Um, what's Flamingo's view on that, and how does it differ? I, I think the basis of any retail is to fully understand your customer. Mm -hmm. And in the emerging markets, you, you see a, a, a poll acts between people who have money and people who are traveling on a budget. And I think it's important that your offer brings an assortment and a communication to both types of passenger. And whilst there is always this premiumization and the need to trade up, actually, if you focus on that, you can lose an entire customer base. And I guess in the markets we operate, we more focus on the, the customer and what their affordable income is, um, rather than trying to, to over premiumise. Mm -hmm. Just um, for people that may not be as familiar as I am uh, with you mm. guys, where are your sort of core uh, okay. operations? We, in, in Europe, we operate in, in Poland, but principally in the regional airports, so Gdansk, Poznan, Jeshov, Krakow. In India, we operate in all of the regional airports. We have the joint venture in Mumbai with, with DFS. Uh, we operate in Sri Lanka and then in a number of airports in Africa, such as Rwanda, Mozambique, Uganda. So these are places that are not natural hubs yeah. and, and have a, a much more uh, conservative customer. Absolutely. Uh, and would I be right in saying you guys almost specialise in that now? Mm. Like you, 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 uh, you've worked really hard uh, to understand the customer in those areas, and that's kind of a real strength. Yeah, I, I think we um, we always have to understand the country we're moving into mm -hmm. because generally they're not you know straightforward countries to operate in, and part of that is understanding who the customer is and making sure the assortment is 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 right for them. Mm -hmm. And I think the thing is when you've got so many of these in so many parts of the world, your ability to pick within the assortment becomes quite scientific because you understand what the customer wants. Mm -hmm. Uh, can you tell us how the new regulations uh, from the Indian government on tobacco um, has affected your business? In India has uh, never been an easy place mm -hmm. to, to do business. And um, I think it's, it's, it's disappointing when you see you know, regulations like we saw on confectionery mm -hmm. come into place which make bringing product to customer very difficult. Um, you know, we, we see the move generally uh, in the world um, with tobacco, but I think it's been particularly disappointing for us that with very little consultation, uh, yeah. these regulations came into to place. I think it's you know disappointing for customers who don't have um, the, the the right to shop that they've had in the past, uh, and for for us it, it it's another example of the challenging nature of of business in India. Of course, yeah, it's not easy. And moving on to. Africa, obviously yep. it's not easy at the moment. Um, tell us how you're adapting to the crisis at the moment. Um, th there's really been two crises in, in, in Africa uh, this year. The first has been the worsening security situation in, in some parts, um, particularly in Kenya, uh, where parts of Mombasa now are very difficult uh, for people to travel to. 
And then, of course, we saw the, the, the human catastrophe, which is Ebola. I think a tool mentioned the other night, you know, it's more important not to talk about the business in the, in this context. Yeah, um, we haven't seen any um, effect so much on, on our, our current business because we don't operate in those countries. Course, yeah, yeah. We have had in place travel restrictions. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not asking our uh, people to travel to, to West Africa at the moment. And as a result of that, there are three projects in West Africa which we've had to mothball until, uh, until our people can travel. Mm -hmm. So the impact has been more on, on business development rather than on, on our business in, in shops. Okay, that's, uh, that's understandable yep. and uh, commendable. Um, is there anything that's coming up in the next sort of um, six months to a year uh, that, you, that you'd like to mention, that you'd like to elaborate on that's really going to push the business forward? I think, um, you know, we, we, we are still striving for this 2 billion by 2020. Course, yeah, yeah. Um, we see next year really as, as getting to a stage where we, we know we're significantly a, a, along the way. I think we will see a lot of expansion within Latin America and the Americas. Mm -hmm. We will keep focusing more on the convenience and the food and beverage, particularly in Indonesia and Malaysia. And I think we will see nice, tangible, organic growth in India and the Indian subcontinent. But I think from a greenfield perspective, Latin America is, is where we see a lot of potential. Now, speaking of Latin America and the Caribbean, uh, tell us how the management structure is going to change there. OK, we, we started with Brazil and Paraguay not really understanding the best way to manage this region. Mm -hmm. What has become very clear is you need to manage the region from the region. So we're building a, a category management structure mm -hmm. um, with category managers based in uh, either Salvador or Paraguay. Uh, and a new operation structure will look up, which will look after Central America and South America. Um, and from, a, from a, a management point of view, we will treat this as a separate region mm -hmm. and manage it with the supply chain and the suppliers there. So it will be uh, a standalone region. Right, okay. Very interesting. Yep. Well, thank you for talking to thank us. Thank you very today. much. It's been um, really uh, interesting hearing in what Wingo's doing and what its, what its plans are for the future, and I uh, hope to catch up soon. Thank you very much. Thank you.